Um, and in addition to inventing the drug ecstasy, Dr. Shulgin is a consultant uh, and very much in demand uh, for by an eclectic group of clients that include NASA, Bristol Laboratories, NIH, University of California, uh, for his view on how to how to experience consciousness and uh, what consciousness is, please welcome Dr. Alexander Shulgin. Don't tell him I use his name, Alexander. Well, it's a great pleasure to be here and a great honor to be here. Um, Mesplin is a ring with three methoxy groups out here. Don't worry what a methoxy group is. Someone near you will probably explain it later a carbon carbon and a nitrogen, a very simple molecule. Uh, and I said, you know, if this molecule can be this effective, uh, what other kind of effects could be gotten by similar materials? So the first thing I did was stick a methyl group on down here. So now I now have an amphetamine compound and uh, took it very cautiously. We we're talking a lot today already about experiments with, with mice and with rats and with um, various animals. In my own case, I, the only animal I used was, was the human animal. I presume this is now a little awkward because of the various uh, national and federal regulations that have come in, but uh, I find that still the human, human animal is the only one that is really effective in evaluating and comparing these various psychedelic materials, and, I, and, and the work I do is still involved in that direction. Um, here's a material that is identical with mescaline, I call it trimethoxyamphetamine, TMA. And, uh, and my golly, it was uh, about twice as potent and totally different in its action. With the mescaline, I had this, this love and sensitivity to a flower that was on my coffee table where I was living. And under the TMA experience, uh, I got very curious about it and tore it apart to see what was inside. Complete change of, of attitude toward, toward something of, of precious beauty. One was uh, an absolute cherishing, uh, uh, sort of a um, reverence, and the other was one of dissective, uh, dissecting curiosity. And the activity was twice, so I went ahead and methyl, did that. I put an ethyl, a propyl, a butyl, a amyl, put all kinds of different groups on that position. Uh, that's one of the beautiful things about having a little bit of fun with the art of chemistry is you can put things on and know where they're going and have ways of determining that their chemistry is going correctly. But the real charming thing, and the really, uh, uh, to me, exciting thing, was the fact each thing you came up with uh, was a new material. It had never been made before. So you're looking at a, at a white crystalline solid in a, in a little beaker there, uh, and you've never seen it before. No one in the world has seen this before. As far as you know, no one in the universe has seen this before. It's a new, new thing you've just made. And it's never seen you before, so you, in essence, have no, no, no dialogue at all. How much do you start with? How much material do you use as a first experiment on a new chemical that's never been tried before by anyone? Well, obviously an amount that's small enough that will not have any effect. But how small an amount is that? There's a very interesting additional nuance in this, in this relationship that I developed over a period of time. That You go with great caution, decide what is an amount that would have no effect, and take one thousandth of that amount. It doesn't take much, it takes time. But it doesn't take much more chemicals because you use a thousand up to where you were, you'd use another milligram perhaps. And so each of these materials had to be uh, learned as an individual new meeting. And one of when the outgrowths that I discovered is that the beauty of your final results of finding out what the, what the effects are, uh, you really can't be wrong. Because you'll say, I found that this material caused a visual enhancement of that and a recall of memories of this and this and yonder. Anyone else who tries it who finds the same results will say he is right. Anyone who tries it and doesn't get the results is, what did I do wrong? So in essence, you come up with, with a winner uh, <laughs> very nicely. Anyway, what I did, put these on there. The methyl group was twice as active. I put a profile with no activity at all, uh, uh, the alpha, the, uh, alpha ethyl mescaline. And by that time, I had made materials up through the Oh, nine or ten carbon chains, so I didn't bother trying them. I went back, put stuff on the nitrogen, out here, the nitrogen atom. Uh, no, it lost activity entirely. A couple of methyl groups out there, you can go almost a gram and not get any effects. Uh, then you have the ring system. Now here, here you got really exciting. You have these three methoxy groups sticking out in the ring. If you can imagine a hexagon being held by a two carbon chain, you have the hexagon out here. You have one, two, three, four, you have five positions. Three of them are occupied with methoxies. 
So here's your, your, your quiz of the day. How many ways can you put three methoxy groups on this six-membered ring? They're different compounds. The answer is six. You can have three, four, five, two, four, five, two, three, four, two, three, five, two, three, six, two, four, six. I can, if I had a side slide, this would be obvious. Anyway, so I, I synthesized the other five compounds. And uh, by golly, the 245 was 10 times as active. Uh, 246 was also very active and very interesting. The other three were absolute duds, nothing, nothing at all. So here, suddenly I now know that you can get much more potency and complexity, more more stimulation, more eye dilation, uh, but also psychedelic effects with, say, 245. So now you have a new material, TMA, call, I call it a TMA2. Uh, you have three methoxy groups out here in those positions, trade each of them into an ethoxy. Did you three more compounds? And only the four position was, was sensitive. So suddenly you have a, a position out there that, that gives you more potency. So I put other groups going out that way and began realizing that the, this is a structure. These are all called phenethylamines, by the way. Uh, this structure is amenable to, uh, amplification, complexity increasing if you substitute here but not there. So that's where I go. Uh, we're talking earlier some talk about neurotransmitters. Uh, it occurs to me that uh, that position with the methoxy group, uh, the methoxy group can uh, metabolize off easily. What about putting a group out there that won't metabolize off? Instead of methoxy, put a methyl group out there. So I made the compound 2,5-dimethoxy-4-methylamphetamine. And I said, it's either going to be much more active, because it can't come off and be uh, metabolized easily, and hence I'll have a more active compound, or it will not be active at all, but it will go into the neurotransmitter site that psychedelics go into, and if there's anything to the argument that these are neurologically activating sites and may be activated by people who are uh, with mental illness, you may have a therapy to, for mental illness. You can't lose. So I made the compound, tried it, and it turned out to be quite a bit more potent. Yet, this is a material called DOM, which that, of course, led to a whole new direction. If you have DOM out there, methyl, what about ethyl? Active compound, propyl, active compound. And if it's methyls and the propyls and so forth, active, put a bromine out there, active compound, put an iodine out there, active compound. So the, the thought occurred to me, if you have an alkyl group that that's DOB and DOI, uh, DOM was the one that got off into San Francisco under the name of STP. I don't know if any, if any of you are young enough to know night San Francisco in the 60s, but there was a, a, a D, uh, STP, a DMP, STP, I should say, was very active at that time, and it was turned out that I found out that it was indeed DOM under another name, STP. Uh, they, they said uh, serenity, tranquility, and placidity was the name for it, and no one knew what placidity was, so it became uh, serenity, tranquility, and peace, which was a little bit more understood, uh, to the police authorities who did not like this idea of this going around, they didn't know what it was. They called it too stupid to puke, which was their counterpart to the, this is the days of the Haight-Ashbury uh, clinic. And it was, at this time, I was up in the hill in the medical school, and this was going out there and had no idea what STP was, one of my compounds. I talked at a, a media, at a uh, conference back in the East Coast, here in the East Coast, about a week or two earlier, and I talked about the material and gave it structure, and I suspect it was just synthesized from this seminar I gave. Anyway, the uh, bromo, the, <laughs> funny world, uh, the bromo compound, iodo compound, it occurred to me, maybe it is because this alkyl group was active, and you have what's called a, a lipophilicity or, or hydro phobicness, where something likes something that's fatty, and maybe if I put something on there that was water-loving, like a nitro group, it would not be active when it goes into the, into the neurotransmitter uh, receptor site. I put the nitro group active. Well, maybe it likes both it was putting its tail into this receptor site, going to the right that's lipophilic and to the left that's hydrophilic. What if I'm putting a group on that is not philic at all, namely fluorine? So I put on, a, I think it was a trifluoroethyl oxy analog, so I felt this would probably not be active at all, also active. So just getting it, the tail of the four position that molecule into the receptor site produced activity. So from that, the obvious steps were to go and make, take off the methyl group, get away from the amphetamine chain. So I took the methyl group off, and that gave uh, 2CB, then 2CI, a host of other materials in the same ilk that was just a, a, a beautifully rich 
um, collection of, of compounds, many of them uh, uh, not as potent as the amphetamines, but shorter lived and much more benign and much more uh, friendly than the corresponding amphetamines. So this is more, then I'll, oh, another thing I, I, somewhere along the line occurred to me, if oxygen does a good job, put a sulfur on there, and you get them now the 2CT family, 2CT2 uh, up to about 2CT25 or so, of which about half of them are active. So this is, the, this is kind of the hand-waving world of synthetic chemistry. I could go on for another 10, 15 minutes and get into tryptamines and go through the same complexities, but you have this as the active position. That is not as active. This is less active. Alkyl groups on tryptamines are much enhancing in, in nature and complexity of action. Alkyl groups, with the exception of MDMA and a couple of others, on the phenethylamines destroys the activity of the phenethylamines. So there are differences between the, these two families of compounds, but those differences are not um, Negative, they are just informative. 